Good morning. My name is Christian McIntosh. I'm from Little Rock, Arkansas, and I currently work for Arkansas Electric. And today I'll be showing you how I deep link the Power App to replicate some of the features that we have provided with InfoPath. So I'll uh, get to the agenda. So I plan on completing the form and showing you the perspective of an end user as they were to submit that form. And after that, I'm going to go into an in-depth explanation of how I use three different Power Apps and tie them all together with one Power Automate and then go into a little bit more detail on how I replicated some of the controls that were provided with InfoPass. And here's the resources of two blogs that I found very useful. And so now we can begin the demo. I'll drag my screen over here. And as you can see, I've created a communication site and I've provided a list. So after the user submits a form, they can see the status of the form that they just completed. So we'll go ahead and create a new form. And just to give you a little background context, this is an equipment transfer or removal form. So anytime that a member of our company um, is looking to remove some of the equipment in their office, such as a computer or office equipment, such as a bookshelf or a vehicle or things of that nature, they will complete one of these forms. And this is a way of us to keep track of the things that are being disposed of within our company. So. As you can see, it's a pretty straightforward form. And the request to buy the day created fields are pre-populated with the user's email and today's date. So I'm just going to go ahead and create the form and select the division and the company and enter a department number. And so now we have the approver email. And as you can see, Darth Vader is my uh, immediate supervisor. But if you were to remove an email, I have um, error message that is displayed asking the user to put a valid email in the requested by field and I will enter another email to show you an example where I am the immediate supervisor. And so we will keep going. So now I select the category of the item to remove and we'll do a computer. If you scroll down, you see that the stage is set to tech support, but if I were to select uh, office equipment, Stage will be changed to campus services and so on. So, but go ahead and remove a laptop. So I'll enter this information. I'll do a removal. Then I have a serial number field that does not allow you to enter letters. And so I just put some numbers in there, and then we'll just say that the laptop is broken. And I also have a cancel pop up just in case you'd like to discard any information and this will return you to the communication site. So go ahead, select no and submit the form. And after this assess screen, I have a timer that is ran and it will take us back to the communication site. And so if we scroll down, we can see the list and we can see the status of the submission is now waiting to be approved. And if we come to Outlook, we will see that the approval has been sent. And so this is the email that the immediate supervisor will receive, and it basically contains some information about the form, such as the form type, the item description, who was created by, and things of that nature. But just in case they would like to be provided with more information, I've also provided a link to the completed form. And this is my first use of deep linking, and this is a separate Power App from the original form completion Power App. And none of these fields can be edited, it would just be a hard copy and like I mentioned earlier, just to provide them with more information. So we'll get out of that. Go ahead and uh, approve the request and you can enter comments if you would like. Okay, now it's been approved. If we wait a second, three more emails should be sent out. Uh, there they are. I initially send uh, another email to the submitter letting them know that their request has been approved. And then I send a hard copy email to the submitter, similar to the email that I've sent to the immediate supervisor. And here I've used a little HTML to make the email look better. And if they click the form button in the center of the email, they will be taken to the same power app that I provided to the immediate supervisor. So none of the fields can be changed. It would just be sort of like a hard copy. And so I'll come down because our stage was set to tech support. They will receive a notification as well. And if they click the form button, they'll be taken to a different form. And I'll go into the explanation here in just a second. But I've also provided a hyperlink at the bottom of the page. 
to a specific tech support page and they can see all the items that are assigned to them. And if you look on the left, you will see this edit form hyperlink, which was a feature of InfoPath that I went ahead and replicated and added to the SharePoint list. And if they click this, it would also take them to the specific form. And this is the third Power App that I've created. And so I'll go into a little bit of detail about what's going on. So on the top left hand part of the screen, they have a back button, which is another pop up I created that can either take you to the tech support or campus services page. And on the right, on the top right hand part of the scene, there's a change view control that I've created. And this was another feature of InfoPath. And so to scroll down, these are the questions that are specific to tech support. But if you select campus services, we will see the campus services questions. And this is another, as I mentioned, feature of uh, InfoPath. So also, if you scroll down, you see the questions that they will need to answer. And I've added another send email control, which is another feature of InfoPath. And to uh, test this out, this allows the analyst to send a quick email to the submitter. Just, you know, see what time you would like to pick up the equipment or anything of that nature. So, but I'll just go ahead and just send a test email to show you that this works. And send. I'll just play the notification at the top of the screen. If we heard the sound. So now we can see that the email has been sent. And so now I'll show you the three power apps and explain what I did. So here's the first form. And we have the first two fields, which I'm pretty sure you're familiar with. I've just used the user email function and the now function. And then if we come down to the approver email, I've used the Office 365 connector and the manager function that's located within it. And I went ahead and passed in the requested by field. And so I put an if error on the outside of that because Power Apps will display an error message if uh, this is not a valid email. And so in spite of that, I just went ahead and displayed a blank field in the approval email field. And then I have a separate error message that I've used, and I used the coalesce function to where I basically check to see if the request about field is a valid email. And if it's not, I ask the user to enter a valid email and display that error message. So we scroll down and these forms or uh, these fields were just items that I put into a SharePoint list and displayed them in an edit form control. And if we go to the bottom, the stage is not an edit. You cannot edit the stage. Uh, this is based on the category selection. So I have two if statements basically stating that if the user selects computer or computer equipment, then the stage is tech support. And if not, then the stage would be campus services. For the cancel pop-up, um, I've created a variable on start named variable pop-up, which is a Boolean, and I went ahead and set it to false. And on the select of cancel, I set that variable to true. And on the left-hand side, I've grouped a rectangle in the background to kind of give it that pop-up feel. Then I use a little HTML to create the box as well as the labels. Well, I used the label control to create the labels and then two buttons. And I think that's just about it for this form. So I'll go ahead and go to the second one. And this is my first use of deep linking. And so we'll start on on start. And I use the collect function. And I went ahead and created a new collection to store my data source. And this helped with any delegation warnings. And then after that, I create a new variable called var variable employee ID. And I use the param function, which allows me to add a string to the end of the URL. And this will kind of make more sense when I show you it in the Power Automate. And let's see, then I, on my first screen, I inputted a gallery with my data source. Let's see. Uh, but I go ahead and start the user on the user screen. And I have a timer that goes off after one second. And this, what's, this is what provides us to this specific record. So I have a new statement basically saying that if the variable employee ID, which I created on start, is not equal to zero, then I go ahead and create another variable called a uh, bar record. And I look up and I use the lookup function with the new collection that I created on start, which is my data source. And I provide that form ID, which takes us to this specific record. And the default mode of this form is view because I don't want any of the fields to be changed. And I think that's pretty much it for this form. So now we go to the third form. And 
I've used the same deeply can process that I use for the second form, but I've added a few more controls. And so the top left is another pop up that I've created, which if I select. I use the launch function on select of either of these buttons to take them back to the communication site and their respective page. So either the campus services page or the tech support page. And on the right hand side, I provided a drop down and a label. Which is a feature of info path and on the selection. The. The visibility of certain fields changes. And so because I selected camp, campus services, the campus services banner appears and these are campus services questions. But if you like tech support, then the tech support questions will appear. And then the send email. Is another pop up that I've created. And so. I've just inputted some uh, text fields and then a rich text editor. And once you select send, I use the Office 365 um, function or well, connector, Office, Office 365 Outlook connector. I use the send email function. I go ahead and pass in three, these three inputs. And then I reset the boxes just in case the user would like to send another email. Then I send a notification at the top of the screen just to let them know that the email has been success successfully sent. And I see and on my save changes. I've also created another power automate within this power app and which is basically just an update item. So anytime a form is canceled or completed, uh, this power automate will run, will run. I go ahead and check and see if the selection is yes, and then I run that power automate. And after that, I just submit the form. So now I'll show you the power automate. And as you can see, I did run a test because I didn't want to spend my whole 15 minutes waiting on the power automate to run. And so the initial trigger is when an item is created, I go ahead and uh, update the approval status so the end user will know that their form is being processed and waiting to be approved. After that, I start and wait for approval. I enter some dynamic content so the immediate supervisor will know a little bit about the form. And here's my first use of deep linking. I got this URL from our Power App Shared pane, where like just in case you would uh, share and play an app and put it into your browser. And at the end, I added a high navigation bar just to make it look a little better. And this form ID is the string that we entered into the param function. And then I went ahead and added the ID, which is the form number. And that takes us to the specific record that we're looking for. And so, and I should also mention, this is the second Power App. And so if we come to the left, I've added a failure notification step because for my company, these emails are not being sent from my account. They're sent from a user account. So just in case of anything in the or any step in the approval process goes wrong, I would like to be notified about it. And we come to the right hand side, I've uh, created a condition to where the, if the outcome is equal to approve. We have approved steps. So first I send uh, an approved notification to the submitter, basically letting them, letting them know that their request has been approved. Then I able to get this hyperlink within the SharePoint list, which is a feature of info path. So come back and then I also enter the third power app because this is the analyst power app uh, with well, the third deep link URL. That's not the thing, which is the third power app. All right. And so if we scroll down, I have another failure notification step because the send the HTTP request is the main reason of where this power automate will break. So I would like to be notified if that is not working. And so I've set the configure run after to when the send HTTP request has failed. And so come to the left hand side, I go ahead and update the approval status again and set the status to approved. And then I go ahead and send that submitter email. And here's where I've used a little HTML and I've inserted the dynamic content within the HTML to provide a better looking email for the end user. And on the right hand side, I have another condition of where I send the tech support email when an item is signed to them or the campus service email. And at the bottom is where I provide the URL to their respective pages. Let's see if we scroll back up. And then uh, let's go a little bit more. There it is. OK. And so this is all when um, an approved a request has been approved. If the request has been rejected, I just go ahead and send a rejected notification. And then I delete the item from the SharePoint list.
And I think that's just about it. Uh, thank you for your time. Christian, awesome job. Really well thought out. Tons of comments in the chat. I think there's some questions in there as well. Uh, I will let you take a look at that. Really well done. I uh, was thinking that when you do have Darth Vader and there's a laptop problem uh, and someone's needed to send back their laptop, it should automatically say this laptop has failed me for the last time uh, when, when that gets sent out. So. That'd be perfect. That'd be perfect. <laughs> <laughs>